This episode's FTR shoutout goes to Callum Mace. Leave a comment down below to have a chance for a shoutout in the next episode. Make sure you're subscribed. Alright guys, today we're going to be doing another fish tank review. Yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to do. Just trying to be a cool European boy, I guess. Or was that Australian? I just want to have an accent. <laughs> that was supposed to be my, my southern Texas... My southern Texas accent. <laughs> Let me stop before all my subscribers leave. My girlfriend said I'm absolutely horrible with accents. Except for my Vietnamese and mainland Chinese accent, but maybe I'll show you guys another day. Just a disclaimer, there's no spoilers in here whatsoever. But if you haven't watched Endgame, you should really go watch it. It's pretty awesome. Obviously, I'm gonna review it. Disney, you're like a multi-billionaire company, a multi-trillionaire company by now, I think. You can't get a fish tank right. I mean, it does look sizable. It looks pretty big. Um, I think there's goldfish in there, single tail goldfish. It doesn't look overcrowded. Why you gotta have the new tank syndrome? Why can't you like wait until it cycles properly? You were so focused with the cast and the script and all the filming, the action scene that you forgot the background. You hired these great actors, but you forgot to hire a competent aquarium technician. I mean, I didn't know we were needed in movies, but apparently we, we are. I mean, I guess I feel pretty bad for the aquarium technician in charge of that aquarium. The director's like, yeah, we're, we're good to film, but why does the aquarium look so dirty? Can you just, you know, change out the water? I mean, we all know that's not how you do it. People who never kept fish probably think that's how you do it, just change the water. I could only imagine the frustration of the cram technician, like, you told me yesterday to set this up. I can't, I, that's, no. Hope you didn't get fired. Just goes to show that, you know, nature doesn't care about your feelings or your films. Then bacteria bloom is gonna bloom whether you like it or not. Before you save all those citizens, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, you might wanna save this fish tank. We're gonna do a two out of five. All right, as per usual, gonna do my plug while the slideshow is going on. Thank you guys so much for sending tanks. You keep sending them and they all look really nice. I'm getting to every single one of them, so no worries. Thanks so much for all your patience. Shout out to my awesome patrons, Cranium Rex, Daniel Thomas, and of course, Corvus Austin. If you don't know Corvus Austin and his YouTube channel, you should definitely subscribe to him if you're subscribed to me because he's got way more content and he, you know, he's a veteran of the trade. Now, if you would like to also show some support financially, definitely head over to my Patreon. A couple dollars from you can mean the world to me. And also, you know, there's perks, including being able to see some videos first, some early access. That means you can comment first and like it first and share it first. Last but not least, thank you to all my subscribers. You are all showing support to me in that way. All right, first of all, we got this just absolutely amazing collage of tanks that was sent to me by this person called Skull Bunny. Probably not the real name, but uh, they are from Austria, which is in Europe. Wow. You know you made it when people from Europe are watching your stuff. Now these tanks are what I really aspire to make in my uh, quote unquote fish room or like fish corner. But really awesome scapes skull bunny. This is very impressive. The whole experience itself, I would rate it like perfection out of five. Now one of my viewers with the username Fluff sent me this uh, email with this tank from his friend. And they typed up the conversation so it went like this. Me, which is, you know, Fluff. I mean, that tank is way too small. Them. It's fine. They're just a beta fish. They're really cheap. Me. It's not fine to me. Them. It's okay. It isn't your fish. Yikes. Big attitude. Me. Yeah, but it's still a fish. I just hope it's not in a coffee cup forever. Them. Are you vegan or something? What does that have to... I... Ugh. Me. No, I house fish and try to treat them as best as I can. Them. If you aren't vegan and aren't opposed to eating meat and the cruelty associated with the cultivation of livestock in this country, then fish aren't at the top of the issue list, to be honest. Just because there's livestock being cultivated in the country doesn't mean you get to abuse fish. I don't really see the connection now. 
Anyway, thanks for sending this in, Flub, and thanks for being like able to stand up to whoever this person is for you. I think I might not even be able to do that. It's easy for us to say, wow, if I saw that tank, I would be angry at that person. But if that person's like one of our close friends, it's really hard to do that. So really good on you, Fluff. Now, Edward Kenway sent this tank in. This is reminiscent of what a patch of Valisneria would look like in the wild. It doesn't care which side is the front of the tank. It's just gonna grow everywhere. Finished with some litter of wood. This is a perfect overgrown tank for me. Four out of five, great job. Ian Van Dyke, pretty artificial all throughout, except for maybe a couple of half moss balls here and there. And actually, I'm not sure if those are live plants. They actually might be live plants. A small school of neon tetras, so the tank is not overstocked at all. Give me my classic three out of five for artificial tanks. Next, we have a tank sent in by James Chapman. This is a nice little six gallon fluval edge. I like the hardscape. The colors really match each other. There's a tint of red to everything. Then we got the white substrate laid out across the middle. We got some carpeting plants and we got some crypts so like Wigia, Java Fern, and some other plants. And this German Blue Ram is spoiled nuts, the whole tank to itself, and I guess the snail as well. I'm just a little bit concerned that the substrate is inert and there's no fertilizer or any nutrients in it. If you have rooting plants, it's very important to actually have some nutrients in the substrate. Since it's already set up like this, I don't suggest dirting it. Definitely root tabs would be the better option. Four out of five, great job. Very interesting aquascape here, sent to me by John Austin. Sparsely vegetated plants that, you know, has the potential of filling out the tank a little better. It does have a nutritious substrate going on in the bottom. Some floaters on top, classic. But in my opinion, it might have been better if there's a little bit more texture to that piece of wood. Would have been really nice if it branched out a little more instead of just looking like one singular stick. 3.75 for now, probably going to improve later. Good job. Here we have Megan Overman's tank. Right away I'm struck by the use of the moss balls, but I very rarely see this carpeting technique being used and I think it's very innovative. Pretty much all the plants in here are low tech and the uh, that might be fluval stratum for a substrate or some other nutritious substrate, which is nice. I do also like the hardscape. It's got that uh, sort of like golden ratio going on. 4.25 out of five, great job. Now this is Nick from New Zealand. Um, interesting story here. He wanted, you know, all natural tank, but his partner wanted some artificial, so they met like in the middle, some sunken like artificial pieces of uh, a ship together. Um, but then he planted all over them. So it's like best of both worlds, I guess. This little artificial Groot looking uh, sculpture here. Nick pulled it out before his partner could even notice. I hope his partner doesn't notice it because of this video. Good luck, Nick. I just want to take it and just throw it away. Of course, take the fish out before you do that. This tank is sent to me by Reagan P. Now this is a smaller three gallon nano tank. Regan's concerned that this might be too overgrown, but but in my opinion, if you're gonna you know stock the three gallon with fish, you might as well leave it overgrown because number one, it looks great. And number two, live plants being overgrown, they provide more oxygen. Four out of five, good job. Okay, let me try to get three tanks out of the way with one yikes. Yikes. Uh-huh. It's always about the aesthetic, never the fish. That is so true. Yeah, great, that looks good on Instagram, but like, what about the fish? What about the health of the fish, man? It should be first. I'm gonna have to go with a zero out of five. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode of FTR. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button and there'll be more videos to come. Don't forget to get your hands wet.